Hi, welcome to another video from the Factory in a Box. This one is going to deal with times. Now, if we look at our screen, what I've got at the moment, you can see I've got a, well, I've SSH'd into my uh, development Factory in a Box system. I'm in the Fire directory. And in the back behind, you can see I've got my browser open and you can see I've got no connection to the server. And that's because I've got all my containers stopped. So let's just bring them up. And the reason I'm doing it like this is that I'm not going to do it and I'm not going to run in the background. I'm just going to bring it up. I want to see all the messages from each of the things. Because what we're going to do is we're going to talk about time. And we're going to deal with Node Red first. So let's bring up all our containers via our docker compose.yaml. And here we go. We can see here that we have some messages. We can see we've got Mosquito, we've got Postgres, and Postgres is reporting in UTC 2359, and so is Node Red 2359. So just re remember that. Now that's running, so let's go back to here and let's just refresh our page. Let's make sure that. Uh, We've got here. So what I've got here are a number of inject nodes. Uh, let's bear in mind the time because this is this is a fun video. I've had I've, this is I'm remaking this because of some of the things you might see come up in this video. I can't I can't claim that I've got to fix everything, and the reason is that we are chasing time. So let's look at what our current timestamp is. I'm using the standard inject nodes here, and I'm using a special one down here. But this standard inject node is our one here. Now we don't. Often we don't use it to know the time, we use it to trigger things. So let's just recap what it can do. It will inject a timestamp. Often we might use it with just a simple, um, uh, just an object, but an empty object. But we can use it to inject it initially, at the start of when we, when we load a flow. And we can repeat it at an interval between times or it's a specific, a specific time. And so well, let's just have it like that. So we've got current timestamp. The result is the time. And if I click it, I'll see that first. OK, let's go back to what it was. Originally, it was the epoch time in milliseconds. Click it against. We Again, we see that it's uh, just gone past midnight UTC time. And then locally, it's 11 a.m. in the morning, UTC plus 11. And that we're in, I'm making this video in Australia and Melbourne. And that's, I think, either the time on I'm not sure if I should change this I guess to find out but I think that's my browser time um, or it could be the time set on the pi um, but needless to say the pi is actually set it's the local of the pi is is Melbourne but you will find we'll find out very quickly that the container as we saw actually it was it's at UTC time so if we're going to use Okay, 02. So let's go for 03. So let's just try and set a trigger that's going to go off at a specific time and we'll make it uh, 11 uh, 03. And we'll do a UTC time which is going to be 0, 0003. We'll see which one works. Let's deploy that. Let's put that in the bin. Let's just check our current time. And we'll see that we've got 15 seconds to wait. And we'll either get two or one of these nodes working. If there's any big delays, oh, here we go. We've got a node. Which one was it that worked? Okay, the UTC, the UTC time one actually fired. So the UTC one fired because essentially the time in this box here is UTC or I guess system time and the system time on the in the uh, node red container has not been changed from UTC so this isn't obviously the first time this has come up there's plenty of people have talked about this so let's have a look at what what this what the what people have written about this is in node red it runs at the wrong time I've got it set at a specific time but it doesn't run at the time I want I'm pretty sure it's because my local time zone isn't being acknowledged properly um, 
then they've tried setting the tz environment variable but no dice now i think potentially they have maybe made an error later on it'll it'll possibly happen down here that they'll say well okay we've, we've got about it's about localization but let's scroll down so and the final answer here is that uh uh Oh, and in fact, Petong is the person that, that actually answers the problem. It says, he's hitting this as well. He's running node red inside of Docker, which we are, and he's got a time zone set to that uh, in the Docker image. So, uh, and it says, yet even the logs coming from node red Docker in UTC. Well, let's hopefully get to fix that. So down here, um, he says, he's just discovered that adding this line, process.env.tz equals his local time zone to the settings.js file fixes the issue. Now note the semicolon at the end of this. Uh, so let's see how we put it in. That's one solution. Uh, another solution here is, in fact maybe I should just stick to the end, the, the same problem. Is there any way to make the inject node use the local time and not UTC? We'll see that it isn't necessarily UTC that it uses by default but it's the time zone of the system. Um, so uh, and this, uh, one solution here would be to add a change node where the payload, which is what it affects, is actually adjusted by a fixed value, but of course it doesn't necessarily take into account summer time properly. But right down the bottom, we have a good solution, and that is to use another module called node red contrib cron plus seems to be the most useful and we can see here that we can set a particular time zone and once we've set a particular cron job schedule um, it's actually possible to uh, to have quite a fine control over over that just like cron does and this one well possibly this is hopping around a little bit but but potentially where does process.env.tz come in well it's a Node.js time zone envir uh, environment variable, and it's for Node.js. I think it can only be set once, and it's only set once on system start. So let's see where we will put that in. We're going to redo this. Let's open. Um, let's go back to here. So we're, we're running this. Let's stop it now. I didn't run it in the background. I wanted to run it in the fore uh, run this in the foreground. So we'll just wait for that's done. Then apologies to the clicky keyboard. We'll just change to node red data. And this is where my settings file is. And if you're using the factory in the box and you've updated it, it'll be here. So let's just ls minus al just for to recall that it's we're exposing the volume uh, that that uh, the Docker volume to the system now this user 1001 isn't the standard user it's the user uh, it's well that's you that is well it's that's the user number and reference and the group and the user so rather than being a system one it's actually to do with the container so in that case the reason i'm saying that is a long-winded way of saying that you're going to need to use sudo nano to edit this because we we aren't we as pi as the pi user we haven't got permissions uh, settings so I've done this before, and this is where we need to put it. Now, the clue really was in the semicolon. So if we want to set a local time zone for node red, and in this case, I'm going to use Australia Melbourne. It could be whatever your local time zone is. We're going to put it outside of this module exports object. This is a separate thing, and it's a separate just a key value pair process and process dot env dot tz equals australia melbourne and end like that and then process it doesn't affect module exports in any way at all and of course module exports is where you set all the settings for um, node red including user and password as well as the static area so here we are the securing node red this is another important section to use but now, as we change the time zone, let's just focus on that. And save it, and write it, and let's cd back to Fiab. I'm not sure why tab completion didn't work there, but there we go. 
and possibly because there's too many ones beginning with fi um, and here we are so let's just do docker compose up and let's recall what was um, what happened there that's so now we've changed the time zone to the local time in fact here we go we can see node red as it goes past it's going to stop yeah here we go node red one now the time from node red is reported in our local Melbourne time uh, still though when we see some PG admin sorry some Postgres information we'll see that Postgres is still set at um, well, Postgres went past quite quickly here we go so Postgres is still set at UTC time and these are all reporting in UTC so we're going to fix that up as well later on um, but let's look at node red so now we've got node red running let's go back to our dashboard here and see what effects that effect that has had so remember we need to just find out what time it is and so we've got 10 so we've got a few seconds to do this which is great so let's make this run at 11 11 local time 11 11 and of course UTC time what time is is that it's it's 11 minutes past midnight so we'll set a UTC time in here deploy those I'll show you another little problem it's a problem but uh, something that is obvious that becomes obvious later and that's if we try and put a second uh, if we try and put any seconds in these in these triggers that's not going to work for us so we've got 15 seconds remaining I've got two separate well in fact three separate ultimately because we've got we've got this last one down here but there are different debug debugs the reason is that when the message is supplied here on the screen it actually comes from the in fact here we go it's happened so which one did it come from this time it came from our local one fantastic so the inject node is really the I guess the system time that the um, well it's the node.js time ultimately I guess because the system time is still going to be UTC I'd say on that in that container but it's the node.js time zone that's set and that's where we come to the cron plus node because now we've set the time zone locally here how about if we want to trigger a job that's going to go off in say Brisbane and Brisbane is an hour behind at the moment so let's see where cron plus comes in and to install cron plus simply a matter of finding it on the manage palette install search for cron now it won't sh cron plus won't sh oh well here we go so it tells me it's installed okay that's great so cron plus is down here we've got it installed we can find it by typing cron plus up here or just scrolling down all our nodes and sort of it's been put in somewhere in fact it's on the it's an input node down here cron plus I'm not sure if we can drag and drop it around no it doesn't want to move but that's it it's an input node so how do we use cron plus the nice thing about cron plus is it's got it tells us actually when the next time it's actually going to go off so uh, it uses pretty much well let's see oh we can actually change it to a particular payload uh, we can actually change uh, set it to whatever it is but but the the schedule the schedules are named so this is the name of the uh, its name and it's got a topic name as well and it's a cron and okay well I'm happy with that but here we go this is the this is where we're gonna have to use cron now they are a little bit more complex but it's quite nice uh, it's like hours minutes seconds or is it maybe it's seconds minutes hours that way and then uh, repeats and all the other things like that so, but the good thing is that actually as we as we if we for example pick an example with a drop down it will sort of start off with with sort of how to use it so so um, I'm not going to explain how to use cron uh, but just to say that um, there's quite a bit of help here and there'll be loads of help online about how to sort of use that understanding time zone examples and scheduling there should be some here we go so there's there's a nice explanation in here as well second minute hour day of the month month day of the week year and if we just put stars in that's all of them essentially sort of a um, asterisks 
matches for all values, so it's a, a wild card. So we want, after blathering on for very long, for a long time, this is at 9.39, so we need to set that to our Australia Brisbane time, Brisbane time. See what time we are now again, 11.14. So it's gonna be 10.14, so, uh, so let's just change that to, we might have to change it once more, actually. The nice thing is, okay, we've just missed it. Look, 23 minutes and 31, so we'll just set that to 15, 27 seconds. Okay, so that's quite nice. So the next event is, is quite useful. In fact, very useful. Let's say done. Let's deploy. Let's look at the debug. Let's put that in the bin. In fact, it tells us here where the schedule is. And in a few seconds, we should get this particular payload. Being, or this particular node triggering and sending what it's going to send. Here we go. Okay, now we do see that it's a bit more complex. It's a lot, lot richer, but it's still got the trigger and it's still got the timestamp. It's still got the correct value here. And of course, as I scroll through it, we'll see the milliseconds passed. 1st of January, 1970. Uh, we'll still see, obviously, that it is quarter past midnight UTC time. It is quarter past 11 UTC time. Sorry, UTC plus 11, which is the Australia Melbourne time. And, but it doesn't, but of course that's correct. But it's, it triggered at 10.15 UTC plus 10. So can we see that? Okay, so, um, okay. Now we can see that information here when we look at the the time zone that we've got set, we see that the server is here and we see that the server is set in Australia Melbourne, which is quite nice. So here we go, so that's great. So uh, there's much more, it's much richer and it's much clearer what's going on. So this is a nice a nice tool here and we can do it to this, we can do that to the second. The last thing I'm gonna show you is if you try and set seconds in here, it's it doesn't, sort of fall over nicely sort of thing. So uh, what time have we got? 11.15. So let's say we want 11.16 and a half or 11.17 and 30 seconds. If I try putting that in here, I go, looks all right. I can click away from that. No colors come up. I say done. I deploy. Everything seems to be hunky-dory, but what's happened here is that if I open this, we see that the repeat has gone to none. So that's a slight I'm not sure if it's quite a bug exactly, but um, we can only put the times in at a to the, to the minute. And, and if we try and put that to, we try to add any seconds or any other information, it it, um, it sort of fails uh, silently, I suppose, is maybe the right way to say it. It doesn't let us know there's an error. But now, of course, we can have I just waited on too long? No, okay, we have. I have set a local time that's going to be a true local time um, based on the server here, um, and that should, in a few seconds, give us the give us another trigger. That should sorry, that should trigger, or is there what's the right term for that? It should actually repeat at a particular time. And that time is now because we changed the process environment TZ or process env TZ to Australia Melbourne. It will happen. In fact, there it goes. Let's just make sure that's the right node. So yes, it came from here. Uh, so it's so to to say that the inject node only runs at UTC time is not quite correct. But if we want to avoid having to set our time zone at all in our settings.js file, we can use the cron plus node. And the cron plus node is a much more um, configurable node, especially if you're operating in different time zones. So thank you for watching.